this is a, a video of, of all the learning that's been going on um, with with our young people, and it's it, 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 it's a, it's good. It's a good one. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't know about you when you see that. I, um, it's just so inspiring um, and encouraging and uplifting to think about what children who sometimes can be sort of marginalised um, within society and sometimes, you know, um, that actually what do we what do we do to, to, to let them flourish, to let them fly and to, to achieve all that they can be? And I think that that video for me, it's quite emotional when you watch it. Um, and it's just so um, about the possibilities and it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see. Um, Jilly, you're popping um, a love heart in and Kay Quinn's giving some really nice feedback too. So I'm sure Iona and the team, Alison, will be really encouraged to uh, to see that. So I'm just going to um, bring up some slides and pass over to Iona, who's going to speak first. And then we're going to head um, to Alison. I just bring up the slides the right way. Um, so. Bear with me. There we go. So Alison, um, Iona's going to speak a little bit around about learning for sustainability and some of that journey that she's been on. And then Alison's going to pick up specifically around some more of the STEM. And that video just kind of inspires both and brings both together. So over to you, um, Iona. Thank you. Thank you. So learning for sustainability is how we have wrapped STEM into our curriculum. So we're starting off. Sorry, are we on the right? I think that's the end of it, Mary. Oh, for, so beg your pardon. That's me. Apologies, apologies. I'll start again. So, as I was saying, learning for sustainability is how we integrate STEM into our curriculum. We are a provision for autistic learners who often come with co current learning disabilities and learning difficulties. So, we have uh, 37 learners in the provision that come from all over Stirling. We're the only secondary autism provision at present, although that is expanding. Um, we have some of the most vulnerable learners in the authority, and as Mary said earlier, that it can, sometimes can be overlooked. So for us, we're trying to break down barriers, change stereotypes, and really have a think about integrity, our values, what we want for our young people, and how we can make that happen. There's huge elements of social justice, because we explore within our community, and our, how we interact with each other, our culture, how we come as a community within the provision because we are from all over rural and city and we look at our rights because children have rights here as well as all over the world and we look at how they match up but fundamentally we're looking to respect our values of the natural world and each other okay next slide please engaged so for our learners as well we have to have a very differentiated curriculum because we have such a wide range of um, learning styles so we can be working with youngsters who are following the milestones curriculum right through to youngsters who are following the hires curriculum. We want to create something together with a professional teacher agency where we come together with different community partners so that we can create a curriculum that's built around our young people, where they are and where they're going. Outdoor learning is key to that for us. We not only do our tiny farm, which Alison will speak about later, 
but we also engage in the actual landscape and national park that's on our doorstep and we travel into there on canoes, on bikes, on our feet and we think really hard about what's around us and the impact it has on our lives. Community is massive within the provision, again because we're from all over Stirling, but also because we like to work with our community partners so that we can have different intergenerational perspectives on our learning. So we work with Scout Troop, we work with um, retired Scouts as well who come in. We've created our own troop in here called First Nanigan, which was created by the children. They, um, they come up with a name for it. So Nanigan means star in Gaelic, so it's really, it's theirs from design all the way through. That agency we spoke about before is not just like teachers collaborating to build a curriculum, it's bringing in outside people. So as we're looking outwards and we're really developing what can we do next to make this exciting, to make it relevant and to make it meaningful. We're consistently reflecting on our practice and again asking for Education Scotland quite often for advice on how to develop further, which is where the STEM grant came in. Can we look at next slide please? So we're enacting and embedding in this one. For us, Critter and Forever Excellence was just it's brilliant. It ties in so much we can do. It gives us a green light to do an ideal approach, not only in the BGE, but also in the senior phase. So broad general education for the folks that are my teachers in senior phases from 14 upwards. We have a huge focus on the world they work and building life skills for kids so that when they leave here, they have an experience of working either through work placement or working on their tiny farm. And that's where the STEM comes in. So through that, we've introduced Green Roots, which is a, a training provider, Brett, Royal Highland Education Trust, um, of course there's so many now that I've just put right in my head, <laughs> and of course the developing young workforce team that come around and support us as well, looking for opportunities. But within that we're looking at um, getting their hands mucky, quite often autistic learners are not perceived as kids that want to get mucky, that seems to be too sensory, we're breaking that down and we're just immersing kids in their learning every day. Can we look at next slide, please? Connecting for us as well is fundamental because we want to try and build a network so that we're reaching out to other people and enhancing opportunities together. Um, last year, Mary had me speaking at the Scottish Learning Festival, which was fantastic because after that, lots of people got in touch. We've been able to link in with other schools. We had a fire pit charter, which was in a tiny farm where the local primary schools and our business partners came together to talk again about what we could do to try and embed learning for sustainability and STEM and everything we're doing. Um, the GTCS hub is something that we've been accessing. This is where I've got the, the um, Explore Engage, if you've not seen them before, they're on here. The learning for Sustainability Scotland thing is a fab resource. I initially met Mary when we were back in, I'm just checking the year now, 2022 when we applied for Learning for Sustainability Awards and the result of that was we got to go to COP, but again, it meant that we could open the door and meet more people. Because essentially what we want to do is try and pollinate ideas so that as teachers, practitioners, business partners, we can come together and make opportunities for young people. One of our biggest things has been applying for that STEM grant, and Alison's going to speak about that just now, and how we've been able to work with Katie at Rett to develop that further. Thank you so much for that, Iona. I um, don't know if folk have any kind of questions or comments or reflections in the chat while I bring up um, the other's presentation. I think it'd be really nice to just even to hear uh, some thoughts in the chat for Iona. I just realised I missed out all the information on interdisciplinary learning <laughs> and how they use that to take risks. So what, do you um, want to say that just now, I want to just before we pass on to it? Before else? we pass on to it, probably is a good thing. So IDL is something that we have that runs, I would say not just when starting first year, it can be thematic all the way through school, but it's a way that we've been using to try and take risks with young people since we have them outside, fire lighting, canoeing, rock climbing. Again, um, Alison here was a wee getting trained up and say fire lighting, but it's just trying to tie the maths and the literacy and the digital aspect into all one big project so they can make a connection that's meaningful for them. Sorry. That's great. 
Thanks, Iona. And just comments in the chat about the amount of achievement the learners have had, uh, the opportunities of working with outside agency. I think that's the thing, you know, STEM learning for sustainability, it's bringing things uh, to life for learners. A couple of questions, um, Iona, you might want to kind of answer in the chat while we pass on to Alison and we'll come back to that if, if, we, if we've if we got um, scope to do that afterwards. So I'm just going to share just now and pass over to you, Alison. Thanks, Iona. Okay, thank you. So um, thanks to the STEM um, funding, our Growing Tiny Farmers project was born. So if I can have the next slide, please. The funding has enabled us to develop a partnership with Katie, as Iona was saying from RET, which has given our young people, it's, they're at the heart of our project. Our young people love strawberries and they were keen to grow their own. So it was decided that we would host a strawberry tea at the end of the year to celebrate with our school partners all the amazing learning that's been going on over the past year. So the project follows our creative curriculum. It supports young people to be very curious about their learning, science, technology, engineering and maths all underpin the strawberry planting experiments. Young people have planted strawberries outside in the ground using traditional methods of growing. They have plants in grow bags within our polytunnel. They've upcycled Wellington boots to grow plants, learning about drainage and how the soil breathes. Young people have explored more modern growing methods such as vertical planting and how this may increase capacity within a space and yield a higher return of produce. To support the understanding and give a bit more context, Katie organised a visit to a local strawberry farmer for us who uses vertical farming to grow their strawberries. The farmer shared knowledge verbally with us and also handouts for us to take away. We've learned how to assess moisture in the soil so we don't overwater or underwater. We learned about the strawberry season, the cycle of strawberries, um, pollination, feeding the plants, how, how we can use the runners for next year, um, etc. So, so uh, lots and lots of learning and putting it in context for, for our young people. If I can have the next slide. Thank you. So the impact is, is just is, is huge. Through our partnership with RET, we're building a community of practice to support our project. Every Friday, we work with a local horticultural lecturer to develop knowledge and understanding of farming practices. Learning is then cascaded through the team to build confidence, supporting all young people um, to participate in the project. As a team, we've got a shared commitment to learning for sustainability and the funding has enabled us to be guided by experts and how we can enhance our spaces within the tiny farm um, companion planting to support wildlife that we need for our strawberry plants. Young people are exploring questions about where strawberries are grown, how are they seasonal food, uh, what can we make with strawberries. Uh, one of our young people had I don't know. That. Oh, Alison, I think you're sounding out for me. There, oh, <laughs> I think we just heard one young person, and then I think we didn't hear the rest. Oh, of it was just one. One of our young people um, is uh, loves prime and uh, the the drink, and uh, they uh, we, we were discussing well what's in what's in prime. So we were looking at it, it was a strawberry flavour. So we ha now have a great plan for making a brand new prime flavour using our strawberries and uh, comparing them and seeing which one tastes best. Um, so I uh, watch this space to preserve the knowledge that's that's been shared with us through all the different experts and the partnerships that we have. We're developing a padlet. Um, to record photographs and videos of the different experts and this will ensure that all the new knowledge that we're gaining isn't diluted as it's passed along and, and shared with the team of practitioners within the provision but also the young people that are in now but also for the future. I can have the next slide, thank you. For further impacts um, from this funding is that the new knowledge that our young people are gaining is supporting our wider achievements for example, we're learning about farming methods, which is linked to the Heritage Hero Award and strawberries will we'll make um, jam with the strawberries and this will be then sold as part of our um, Princess Trust Enterprise project. So this project, the Growing Tiny Farmers, is providing our young people with so many opportunities to lead their learning, sharing knowledge with their peers, and we plan to open up our space to the community, um, which again will provide opportunities for, for them to learn from the tiny farmers that we're growing here at the provision. And that's it. 